and in 1969, you bought this little truck leasing business. You bought you were a licensee, if you will, of uh, of a Hertz uh, f- uh, franchise, which was a strategic move on your part. That now I think probably most people, when they see the Penske name, uh, automatically automatically think of of trucks and leasing and fleets. And so, how did that develop, Roger? Well, really, what happened when we were at the Chevrolet dealer in Philadelphia? Uh, I became the national car rental uh, licensee in Philadelphia Airport and built that business. And when they wanted to, the, the, the national headquarters wanted to own the big cities, I sold that enterprise at the airport or the national car rental franchise to the central uh, group. And that money I used to buy the truck leasing business in Reading. It was called M.M. Waterboro, a good Pennsylvania name. And uh, we had 150 cars and 150 trucks. And we were the licensee for Hertz in Reading, Allentown, and Pottsville. And that really was the start of the business today. That, As I sit here today, we've got 330,000 trucks you know, on the road here in, in America. I think it's the largest fleet probably in the world when you look at it, even when you include military. And uh, But that was... a real opportunity for me and, and was able to grow that, uh, uh, making an acquisition in a partnership with Hertz, you know, many years later, which really catapulted us and then bought uh, uh, some businesses from GE, uh, Feld Truck Leasing, and these things kind of helped us build that to where we are today. There was some acquisitions, but obviously a lot of internal growth, organic growth. And one key moment happens in 1999 with United Auto Group. And when you talk about really propelling the Penske uh, automotive business, that had to be a catalyst for you, right? Well, having really been in the automobile business, uh, you know, for a number of years, but it really uh, pivoted into Detroit Diesel and a lot of the other things we were doing. Uh, I really wasn't effectively running a dealership at that point. Pat Ryan, who was one of my directors, said that uh, he understood that uh, the business uh, uh, at uh, UAG at that point might be for sale. So I met with the, with the audit committee chairman, uh, Michael Eisenson. In fact, I met with the Butler Aviation at Newark Airport about 11 o'clock at night. And uh, we put a deal together that we would, we would buy the, the New York Stock Exchange company. And I think the stock was four bucks a share at that point. But uh, at, the end, at the end of the day, that was... Uh, a real opportunity and when you think about you know delivering today five or six hundred thousand vehicles on a worldwide basis you know four continents and nine countries and you know thirty thousand people and you think with truck leasing that together over over 60 it just it just came together so fast it was hard for me to really understand how it did but on the other hand uh, my love for cars and having auto racing as a common thread through our brand name and it's really turned out to be a dream come true. It's probably more than you could ever imagine, I'm guessing. You know, I don't know that, uh, you know, I'm the most effective as a forward planner. I'm, I'm more interested in the next challenge. And every one of these, I look for underperforming, undervalued. That's where I do my best work. You know, whether, we, whether it was coming to India and not, you know, not, not, having ever been there, going to Australia with a supercar, getting into NASCAR, all the things that we've done. But looking at these businesses and then growing a group of people that, that stayed have stayed with me through many, many years, you know, low turnover, uh, you know, high integrity, full transparency we have with the group, you know, it's helped us grow the business. So I'm, I'm always interested in the next challenge. And my wife said, probably on my grandson will say, Mr. Opportunity. <laughs> Mr. Opportunity, indeed. 